Hi, Terry Shanefeld for UAB School of Medicine. Usually you'll hear physicians talk about a finding being statistically significant. Well, usually they're basing this on the result of a p-value. In this video, I'm going to discuss in very general terms what a p-value is, how you interpret it, and importantly, what it can't tell you about the findings of a study. So there are two statistical approaches we can use to compare two groups. And let's say we're doing a study of comparing a new drug to placebo. And we want to see its, its outcomes. So the first thing we would do is calculate the main effect of the, of the difference between the outcome rates in these two arms of the study and calculate the variance or variability in this main effect. Now one pathway we could go down would be something called estimation where we calculate the confidence interval and traditionally 95 percent confidence interval around this main effect. I have a previous video describing confidence intervals and we're not going to talk about that anymore in this video. What we are going to talk about is hypothesis testing. And in an experiment we develop a null hypothesis and in a superiority trial that null hypothesis is that the main effect is zero. And then we calculate our test statistic and determine a p-value. So statistical tests are just mathematical formulas that produce test statistics. We could have a t-statistic, a z-statistic, a chi-square, and then we compare our test statistic to a table and get our p-value. And these statistical tests assess the likelihood that chance accounts for the results we observed in the study. There are lots of different statistical tests and the choice of which one we use depends on the data. And it depends on the type of data, its distribution, the study design, etc. This slide shows a variety of different statistical tests that are available. And as you can see when you look at these figures that the test that you choose depends on the underlying data. So there are two conclusions that we can draw from a statistical test. One is that the observed differences that we see between the two arms of the study are probably not due to chance. That the finding was statistically significant. We also could come to the conclusion that the observed differences are likely due to chance that there was no significant difference, that it wasn't statistically significant. Now either of these two conclusions could be long, wrong, leading to a variety of errors, type 1 and type 2 errors. So this figure tries to show that there is some higher being out there that knows the truth, that our two arms of the study, our new drug, is either different or it's not different than placebo. And we do a study to try to estimate the truth because we never can really know the truth unless we studied every single person with that disease, and that's almost impossible. And our study could say that a difference exists between our new drug and placebo or, or that there is no difference. Now, we're in these two boxes. We're in great shape. Our study found a difference when one truly exists, and this is the power of a study. Or our study found no difference, and no difference really exists. We're great. The problem is when we're, we're in these two boxes. And for the remainder of this video, we'll focus on alpha or type 1 errors, which is when our study finds a difference when no difference exists. So again, an alpha or type 1 error, a study finds a difference when none exists. This is a false positive study, if you will. And technically, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis, or I'm sorry, we reject the null hypothesis when we shouldn't have. And this is where our p-value is. So our p-value is our alpha or type 1 error rate. And traditionally, when we design a study, we set the alpha or type 1 error rate of at least 0.05, if not less. And so where a p-value being statistically significant is less than 0.05, that's where this concept comes from. So p-value is just the probability that the results we see in a study, or one more extreme, could have occurred by chance alone. And this assumes that, in fact, there is no difference between the groups. And the lower our p-value, so the smaller it gets, the more sure we can be that the differences we see in our study are just really due to chance and not really a difference um, in underlying event rates between the two groups. Now, p-value cannot tell you if there's bias or systematic errors in the study design. It's not for that. It's just to tell us the role of chance. So no matter what the p-value is, it will not help you figuring out if the authors or the researchers did a good job designing their study. And also, importantly, can't determine if the effect is clinically significant. And just because something is statistically significant doesn't mean it's clinically significant. So very small effects in a very large study can have a very small p-value and be highly statistically significant, but not very clinically important. 
So don't get fooled just because something is statistically significant that it means something. You have to use your clinical judgment to decide if that difference is important enough that you should change your practice based on that finding. This video has helped you understand the uses and the limitations of p-values. Remember, if you have any questions, you can contact me through the course website or through the contact me section of my blog. Have a great day.